Welcome to COVID Conversations. Today I'm talking with Sarah Andrews, who is a phlebotomist, about some of her experiences. What had happened was um, I had a fever at work, low grade fever. So, um, and I was just feeling really off colour. And obviously because I work in house and I'm front line, you cannot be in that position, etc. So I was sent off to the COVID um, fever clinic to be tested. And I had the test there and I was sent home to isolate, which is what I did. To begin with, it was really strange because you don't realise how much of your life is spent doing things outside of the home. Going to Bunnings to get plants, you know, <laughs> going to Kmart to pick up toys. All the ordinary things. All the ordinary things you take for granted. And suddenly we weren't able to do that. And it was frustrating. Until I think it was the seventh day. And then um, I got the result from my GP um, to say that it was negative, da 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 da. And at that time, my GP wouldn't see me until I had actually been cleared and provided that information. So I couldn't even go and see him for the sinus fiction I, was actually, I actually had, which required antibiotics. Are people scared about the tests themselves? Some people are. They just don't, they haven't had information that is broken down for them to understand. So a doctor can say to them, oh, you're just going to have a little swab up. And it's not a little swab up your nostril that, that's all over and done with. People can be um, anxious over to what that kind of swab is. It's a very, very thin, um, it's a very thin swab. That's what we call a flopped swab. So it's it looks like um, a very soft bottle brush top, but really minimised. It's very, very thin. So it's a little bit uncomfortable in the sense that if you've ever jumped into water and had water go up your nostrils, <laughs> and it gives you that really oh gosh, you know, that kind of feeling, that's literally what it feels like. And when I say that to people, then they're not so, they're not so scared anymore. So can you give me what you think is the best advice you've heard for people who are coming to appointments at a clinic or a doctor's, they have English as a second language and they're nervous or confused? I would say that they contact, make contact with the doctor or the clinic in my situation um, so that we're aware of what we need to help this person get the best out of the visit and we can contact um, TIS, which is the interpretation services. Um, they therefore can have somebody waiting for them so when they come to the clinic or they go to the doctors or wherever, that person is there so they're able to put their fears at ease because they could ask a person those questions to the doctor and get that information passed back to them correctly. And what's the best advice for the practitioners, the doctor or the clinician or the pharmacist? To be respectful that sometimes people look at a doctor and think, oh my gosh, you know, they're, they're simple terms as one person said to me, they're like a god because they saved my grandmother or they saved my mum. So they look at them very highly. And so by asking them too many questions, they can sometimes feel that they're wasting the doctor's time. And even they, they may ask a question the second time and the doctor's turned it around and answered it, the person still hasn't gotten the full understanding of what the doctor's wanting them to do or what they have to have done. So again, an interpreting service would be perfect ideal because then those questions are answered for them and it's amazing how much more at ease that person feels because then they feel heard. Thank you very much for your time and your insights and for talking with me today and thank you. See you next time.